Hey everyone, it's Devin at the Saltwater Edge. Today we're back again to talk about some fly tying basics. Specifically today, we're going to talk about spinning, stacking, and trimming deer hair heads to finish off your flies just like this. As a natural material, deer body hair is subject to a lot of differences between packages. When you walk into your fly shop, it's okay to take it off the hanger, open it up, and give it a look to see if it has the properties that you're looking for in your flies. The most important three properties that I look for is the texture of the hair, the length of the hair, and the straightness of the hair. As you can see here, a good way to find the length of the hair is to flip it over, look at the hide, and look at the maximum distance between the longest fibers. And that's a good indicator of the general length. The texture of this hair, pretty good, soft, smooth, and the straightness is okay. There's some areas, you know, that are a little bit curlier than I'd like, but overall it's a decent piece of hair. And don't be afraid to call hair and really be discriminating on what you choose in a fly shop. So the first question that comes up is why would you use deer hair heads in your flies? So there's a few really distinct advantages that using deer hair has in your flies. First of all, it offers neutral buoyancy. So you can add it to almost any streamer pattern and it'll make it sit just right in the water and dart from side to side, depending on how you trim your head, which we'll get more to later. Here you see a head that has a collar, dumbbell eyes, and a pretty dense head. And you can alter the density of the head to influence how buoyant the fly would be. So the first question you might ask is, why is deer hair important in fly tying? Deer hair heads offer a significant advantage over a lot of different tying materials to finish off your fly. First, they offer, offer neutral buoyancy to your fly, which means that you can manipulate how high in the water column it sits, and you can have it just suspend just right in the water. This fly here has a collar, which allows it to dart side to side, dumbbell eyes, and a dense deer hair head, which maintains that neutral buoyancy. Now we're gonna talk about how you can create a head like this. So now we're gonna get to actually how you tie it with deer hair. So take this one out of the vise, and we put the back of a Lou Tavery style snake fly and we're gonna go in how I would finish off this fly. So an important thing with deer hair is that you have a really rigid stopper here. So what that means is when I tie in these materials, I'm gonna CA glue it or epoxy it because deer hair has a really tendency to slide. So you really want a rigid stop in the back of that deer hair collar. So start my thread again. Make sure I have a rigid stop right there. Now you will need a stacker. You will need your deer body hair. What I'm really looking for here for this collar, so the first thing we'll do is we'll tie in the collar, which as you can see on this fly, is a flared ramp essentially that lets the water jet off of it and it creates a really cool darting action on your fly. So, take my clump of deer hair. We're gonna select a pretty sizable clump. Something I will say about deer hair is, it's a lot of feel and there's a really high learning curve to it. So you really have to spend a lot of time and just, it's a cheap material, so it's worth spending the time getting used to it. But I'm gonna work out a decent sized clump here. Say something like that. I'll transition it to my left hand. Take my scissors, and cut it off close. And something inherent to deer body hair, is that there's a lot of under fur which is used as insulation for the animal during the colder months. And that really inhibits our ability to spin and stack this stuff. So I'll grab my underfur comb, grip the tips very tight, take my thumb and push it through the comb. And you should see here, we're gonna get some of this underfur, you see some of it right there. And it's really important that you get this stuff out or else it's gonna be a pain in the neck the entire time. You also got the short fibers doing this too by gripping the tips tightly. Once you're content with how much under fur you've removed, you're gonna take your deer hair stacker, take your bundle, take out any errant fibers, and work that bundle into the stacker. Once you're happy with how all is laid in there, that's the stacking. And we're aligning all of those tips, which is very important in the collar. Give it a good stacking, and now separate it, and you can see all those tips are just perfectly aligned. At this point, what I'll do is I'll grip in the back and strip out any short fibers here because they're not gonna help us for this collar. Now, 
get a good hold on this. And I'm going to measure the length of how long I want this collar. This is pretty up, pretty much up to you. I like it about that long. So I'll take that, transition that measurement to my tie-in point, and then I will cut the butts off. Now, so with a collar, you want to maintain tight control of this. I only want this to be on the top section of the hook shank. And if I just give it a wrap and pull, it's going to spin all the way around. So give it a loose wrap, loose wrap, and then pull straight down, just like that. And I'm controlling it the entire time. I'm not letting these two fingers go. And then wrap through it, wrap through those butts. And now we have a collar. Take your thumb and spread that around evenly. And you can see the bottom of the hook shank is totally clean. It's exactly what we want. Now at this point, you could leave these butts, but I'm going to give them a trim because we're going to be spinning deer hair right in front of there, and I don't want that to get in the way. So, wrap through those. We're going to create a smooth section to spin our hair next. It doesn't have to be perfect, but the smoother it is, the better it'll spin. So this process is similar going to go back to your clump, take out a sizable bundle of deer hair. Process is the same. Cut it close to the hide and you are now going to want to refer those under furs again. And you don't need anything expensive for this. You can get a $2 CVS comb and it'll work just fine as well as any metal comb or bone comb. So now something that I like to do is I like to cut the tips off of the hair that I'm stacking. Because when you trim this, it'll be hard to determine where your collar starts and where your the body of your head basically ends. So I'm gonna make that very clear by trimming the tips off of this. Now this, you don't really need to stack because we're just gonna be spinning the entire clump. But I do like to take some of the shorts out and I do that by gripping the end, pulling, gripping the other end and pulling out as well. If there's any shorts, they'll come out right there. So now we're going to spin this and spinning is great when you want a relatively dense head, but nothing too dense, nothing like a popper or a diver. So you will cut these butts off clean as well. And now right at the midpoint, give it one wrap, two wrap, and now you see it just wants to jump and flare. So if I pull this, that thread torque will carry all of those fibers around the hook shank. But I like to moderate it a little bit more than that. I like to use my thumb to make sure there's an even distribution around the hook shank. So I'll pull it and spin it and I'll use my thumb to create pressure that's going to evenly distrib distribute that. And you can see that that's spinning nicely. And then wiggle your thread so you don't trap any fibers and work your way up to the front of the bundle. And then you can pull back and work your thread out onto bear hook shank right in front. And we've just spun our first deer hair stack. And now the density of this is something that you're going to have to play around with. And it really depends on what you want this fly to do. If you want it to sit very high in the water column, you can really get a bunch of stacks in here and make it very dense. But with this fly specifically, I'm going to use it on an intermediate line, so I kind of want a medium density head that's going to be neutrally buoyant, but it's going to sit pretty low in the water column. So it's okay if you trap a few of the errant fibers out in the front, it's not a big deal. Get right up here, make a little thread dam in front of there, and repeat the process. The great thing about deer hair is that you can pretty much add it to any pattern, and it'll just increase the water push and it'll give it some pretty amazing action. It puts life in flies that pretty much no synthetic material could do. Same process. Clean the stack.
pull out some shorts. You can take some time to develop the finger dexterity and just the kind of know-how to handle this stuff. But again, it just comes with time. Cut the tips off. Do the same thing over again. I like to take my fingers, slide it along the hook shank so I don't trap any of those fibers in the previous spin. Midpoint, give it two good wraps, and then pull and spin. I'm gonna use my thumb to distribute those. Looking better. Wiggle your thread through those fibers, get it out to bare hook shank. Thread dam right in front. And give yourself enough space to give a good whip finish. And that is how you spin deer hair. But this is not very fishable yet. So we have to trim it. The best way to do that, you can use your scissors, but I strongly recommend getting some straight edge razor blades that are flexible. I'll show you how you use those. Take one out. You really want to use a fresh edge each time because it needs to be very, very sharp. So you got your razor blade. The cool thing about these is that you can bend them. There's a whole different array of head styles that you can use for deer hair heads. There's diver heads, slider, slider heads, popper heads. We're going to use more of a traditional kind of bullet style head that's kind of inherent to, you know, trout streamers and the snake fly specifically. The way you make that, kind of a good rule of thumb to start the head is be conservative. Less is more. You can always take off more fibers, but you can ruin a fly really quickly with one of these razor blades. I like to take my razor blade and rest it right on the eye of the hook and slide up and back, pushing right through all the way to the collar. And then check frequently to see where you're at. Push towards the collar. See, we're starting to carve that out. The bottom, I like to go a little bit flatter, come up at an angle. And then on the sides, basically the same thing. Start, use the hook eye as your guide And it's okay to do a bit with the razor blade, then take your scissors and do some of the finer trimming. Like that. We just kind of want that wedge bullet profile here. It's gonna push a lot of water. It's gonna give us that neutral buoyancy. And I'm pretty happy with that. There is your snake fly head. So thanks for following along today, guys. I hope you learned something about finishing your flies and adding some life to them with deer hair. If you want to learn more about fly tying, you can follow Devin Donahue Fishing on Instagram. And any fly tying materials, any questions you have, don't hesitate to give us a call at the Saltwater Edge and come in and talk to us. Thanks.